third of our time has been here in Ho Chi Minh City and the part of the war history that we, we embraced was there at the museum, the War Remnants Museum, where people really had to face some very sobering pictures and facts from the American War in Vietnam. And then we also saw the Presidential Palace that the United States built for the uh, republic that it created here in the South. And then we spent our day out at the Guqi Tunnels and to just see and crawl through a little bit of uh, a total space of what, 280 kilometers or something like that of a tunnel network four stories deep in the Mekong of a tunnel system built from the French War to the American War. Uh, a tunnel system never penetrated by the French or the Americans. Uh, there was a moonscape up above the tunnel system that was defoliated with Agent Orange and everything else. But you know, for the students just to crawl through a little bit of Gucci tunnels to see the, the intensity of that resistance uh, that speaks of the Vietnamese. I didn't even know that we were going to a in this museum. Uh, I got there, we got, out of the, we got out of the taxi, and I turned to Eric and I said, where are we going? <laughs> so, um, I was born in a large family. I am the 11th in my family. But right now we have only the like, um, eldest um, sister-in-law, uh, one four older sisters, and my youngest brother. So we have six instead of 11. I mean, I lost uh, some of my siblings in the war. Um, I lost my father in the war. So I'm thinking, all right, we're going to go in here. We're going to look at some guns. We're going to look at some tanks. Uh, we're going to look at some, some old bombs. And, and you know, we're going to head out. And, and that's sort of what it started out as. And so there's, you know, just some stats that start out a bunch of numbers. Okay, this I can deal with this, and this is um, this is nothing I really haven't seen seen before. When I was young, I had to live in the bomb shelter, the bunker. Um, I had to sleep there and had meal there. Just walking around some of the the planes and some of the tanks, and uh, I really felt quite bad because there was a a guy in the little area there with no arms and uh, he, he just walked a little funny, he had an obvious limp of some kind and um, he was sort of going up to people, definitely people that looked American and, and I, I completely avoided him and I, I just didn't want to deal with with that, uh, and I, I'm not sure what I, why, why. I mean, I, I know why, I just didn't, I know that that's what he was there to do, but I, and I guess that, that's how I justified it, is he's just, he's just like the people in the stores here selling their, what they have. That was definitely, made me feel uncomfortable with myself. My family was very poor at that time, uh, but um, we were not alone. Uh, millions um, other family suffered the same. I, I was lucky to live until now because some, some bullets missed me uh, in 1974. My mother thought that I would die at that time. I was lying on a couch, and just the bullet just come, about three or four centimeter lower than me. We headed in to the the second building. Dan comes up to us and he says, "All right, so this is the uh, victims of." Napalm. Uh, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it at all, and I was. I. I could not look at it. I was. I didn't want to look at it. 
but there was this one picture where this person like had no lips and uh, I, I I didn't want to ask whether or not this person was still alive or not. So, you know, it goes, it goes from, from the napalm victims straight to the um, Agent Orange.